can you cut out my Toy Story cup? I, I tried to be sneaky and, and have it on the air <laughs> so no one could see it. I think, I think it got caught in the shot one time. Welcome back to the Villa View. For the next discussion show, you liked the first one, so we thought we'd bring it back. This time we've got nude guests. Alongside me and Dan Bardell, we've got Dan Matthews and Joe Chapman from the Birmingham Mail. Upcoming, we're going to be discussing... Di Matteo is going to be appointed as new manager. We look at, is he the right man for the job? And we ask the serious questions that need answering. The retained list, potential players that are leaving. We're going to look at the players that are about to be released from the club, including the youth players. What needs to be done with our youth system? Thirdly, we're going to look at Tony Z and the importance and the patience that the fans need to make sure that the fit and proper person test goes through fine. And then finally, we're going to be looking at Brad Guzan and all the other goalkeepers and whether we need a new goalkeeper or we've got one that's capable of doing what we need to be doing in the Championship. Stay tuned. So Di Matteo has been rumoured and almost imminently going to be appointed as Villa manager. So Joe, as you've got mm. such a relationship with, with West Brom, so to speak, is he the right man for the job or should we have looked elsewhere for somebody else? If you'd have spoken to me uh, a couple of months ago, I would have said that undoubtedly the best fit for the job would have been Nigel Pearson. The, the kind of shake-up of Villa is going to be pretty monumental this summer, uh, both on the field and off it. So... You needed like a you know a, a safe pair of hands almost, um, and someone that's got a track record of, of you know turning turning football clubs around. Uh, I thought Nigel Pearson fitted the bill pretty well. Um, that's obviously not he's not going he's not available now, so um, they're going to have to look elsewhere. It's been pretty clear for the last couple of weeks at least that Roberto Di Matteo is uh, pretty high up on Tony Gia's uh, shortlist, so. Uh, being the, the kind of one remaining candidate you expect him to be uh, to be named sooner rather than later. Do you see any issues with him that's making you... Which side are you on? Did you say, would you rather have him or someone else like Nigel Pearson who's obviously gone to Derby now that? Um, first thoughts were um, David Moyes when the first, when it started, obviously Tony's year took over. Since then, um, I've probably leaned towards a bit more Matteo. Obviously, I know he did well at West Brom. Um, before that, I think it was MK Dons, did very well as well. Um, obviously, everyone knows he won the Champions League with Chelsea, but Overall, I'm probably leaning probably 70-30 more towards Di Matteo, really. Yeah. I think that his style of football, from what we've seen in the past, would prove successful in the Championship. Obviously, it is relative to who you sign as well. But I'd, I'd like to give him a go, yeah. I think that's what I'd be happy to say, to be honest. Dan Bardell, you're the one that's come out with the left-field choice of, saying Mark Warburton. You've said Mark Warburton for some time now. Would you still rather have Mark Warburton than Di Matteo? Uh... I think I just genuinely think someone like Mark Warburton would be the best person for the job. To be fair, I just think he is a steady pair of hands. He's a savvy guy. He looks after both the on and the off field side of things very well. But he's not going to leave Rangers, so really, there's, there's no point talking about him because I think he'll want to see through the job he's done there, especially with them being back in the top tier now. I've got nothing really against Dean Matteo, other than what we what we said last week, and that he's never really stuck around anywhere, and that that is that is a worry, and he's never really had too many transfer windows where he's had to do a complete rebuild. I think when he was in charge of West Brom, when Tony Mowbray left, they had a very steady set of players that no one really left when they went down. So he took over a, a settled team. That isn't going to be the case at Villa. He's going to take over a team that is, is in turmoil and there's a lot of turnover of players needed. So that would be a worry. But you say now, like Pearson, who wouldn't have been my choice, he, he's now not available. Di, Di Matteo does seem to be the person who it's going to be, but there isn't really any any other contenders we can speak of. It's Moyes has ruled himself out as well. The the only other one would be Steve Bruce, but I don't think he'll leave Hull now that now they've gone up, even though he was a bit non-committal the other day. So Di Matteo now does seem to be the best and and the only option. Um, Joe, West Brom fans are saying that Di Matteo's got no plan B. Is this is this the right way of looking at him? When he when we he first came on the scene, I was very surprised at the time when we uh, we actually paid money to to get him out of his contract at, at MK Dons. He hit the ground running. Really, I remember very early on we we came down the year before with Middlesbrough, and very early on in the year uh, we beat them five 0 at the Riverside. And I remember thinking to myself, we've you know we've got a real we've we've discovered a real gem of a manager. He's only a young guy at the time, uh, and the point you made uh, already about the the squad that he inherited is is very very true. Uh, you know, he, he inherited a squad of players that were ready for the championship, that had got us up there in the first place under Tony Mowbray, uh, and there were also players that had broken through at the back end of the Premier League campaign, 
players like Yusuf Mulumbu and Graham Dorans who really flourished in the uh, in the championship. So uh, I don't know where you look at the Villa squad at the moment, the way it is. How many of those are going to be championship ready players? Yeah, totally. I think that with Di Matteo, his win record speaks for itself though as well. You've got to look at that and it's mm. an average of 50%, 48% alone at West Brom. And a lot of West Brom fans, when he left, they were actually that they were, they were sad to see him go, weren't they? Yeah, yeah. Uh, the football, don't get me wrong. I mean, the football is was was terrific to watch, especially the championship. Um, when we went up, we won the league on, in the championship in 2008 with Tony Mowbray. We actually got more points under Di Matteo, finishing second. Uh, I think we some we got something like 91, 92 points uh, under Di Matteo, earned by Newcastle, who I think hit 100. So uh, it was it was a great season. There were a lot of goals, a lot of victories. Um, and even in the Premier League, the first the first half of the Premier League season, he started very, very well. We won at the Emirates and we got results elsewhere against the bigger sides. Um, and, you know, come October, November time, we were actually sitting in the top six or seven. Uh, and then for whatever circumstances were, we don't really know as, as football fans, um, between October, November time and January, he went on a run uh, which he just couldn't recover from. And... Uh, and at the time, I think it was the right decision to let him go. I didn't think he was going to be able to kind of um, end, end that run that was going to eventually see us back in the Championship again. Dan Bardell, just quickly, right man for the job on this, this occasion, or do you think that we should have tried our best to try and get Moyes in, though he did rule himself out? I think Moyes would have been the fit that would have united the fans the most. He would have been the one that most of the fans were would be pleased to see and that they'd, they'd agree on. It is a bit of a. I feel a bit like we're, we're rolling the dice again in in some ways, but then in in other ways he has proven that he can get a team pr- promoted from the championships. So I don't really know what else I, I should be thinking about or look, or looking for. It just it's any appointment is going to be a, a gamble at this stage. I mean, obviously he's got the links with Chelsea and having won the Champions League. I think that probably is what appeals to the owners, the new owners, as well as having the championship history. So it makes sense in a lot of ways, but. In other ways, it is a gamble, as it would be with anyone. I think he's just a quite marketable man, as you mentioned there. Winning the Champions League, that's a huge thing to have on his back, on his CV. And in comparison to like Pearson, who has annoyed people in Asia already, let's face it. Mm-hmm. And Moyes, who's sort of like, in Manchester United's case, he was he's got that reputation. He's got that stamp as the man that failed after Ferguson left. So I think it is potentially the right man to go for. Now, looking forward, you touch, everyone's touched upon the fact that Players need to go. Players need to stay. But we're expecting the retained list to be out by Villa soon. And the obvious ones that are going is going to be Charles and Zogby, a contract over, and Kieran Richardson. As well as that, they've got some youngsters like Lewis Kinsella. So, Dan Matthews, do you think that some of these players should have been given the extra chance maybe under a new manager? Not the likes of Dr. Zogby, but the likes of Webb and Segris. Massively. I mean, I've been a massive fan of Lewis Kinsella now for a few years. Kept signing him, especially when he's been out on loan. Um, especially when Amavi got injured earlier in the season, I thought, right, this is the kid's chance now. It's Sissoko was out on loan at Porto at the time. Um, never really, really rated Richardson as a footballer, so I'm kind of gutted really that Kinsella's not going to get his chance. To be honest, to get the other guys, not massive knowledge on them. I mean, I know Donassian had kind of failed at Tramir on loan with a couple of loan spells, so mostly just Kinsella, to be honest. I'm more looking forward to the likes of Gary Gardner coming back, Nathan Bakey probably giving him an opportunity in the Championship after a good year at Bristol City. I think those are the ones I'm looking more looking forward to seeing, to be honest. Don Bardell, did it. Joshua Webb is the one that stands out for me, and Lewis Kinsella, because they're both players that played in that next-gen side, yeah. as well as the likes of Donassian, but they've never been given a first-team chance, and arguably, they've not even been out on loan. Well, Webb hasn't, and Kinsella hasn't until this season. I think you've got to look at... I think when we had put Paul Lambert in charge... Obviously, he was there when the next-gen victory happened. And then the next season, you would have expected to see a few of the players make make their way into the squad. But again, we just seemed to... I know it wasn't mega money, but we seemed to waste money on squad players that were never really going to make the grade when surely it would have been better to put a few of that team into the mix, get them in, even just as as filler players or backup, like give them a bit of experience on the bench. But Lambert never really seemed keen to do anything with that next-gen side. I mean, I think the only two... That ever played any football under, under Paul Lambert were Grealish and, and Robinson, and that was sparse to be, to be honest. Both of them didn't, didn't appear very many times. It just it feels like it was a wasted opportunity because that team obviously had something about them to go and win that next gen series. There was obviously a togetherness, 
And I think to put four or five of them in, in the squad, it may have made a difference. And in hindsight now, five years down the line, I mean, players like Jordan, Jordan Graham, who's gone to Wolves, he'd be great for us in the Championship. He'd be the kind of player we need, a, tr- a tricky winger. We haven't really got anyone like that. So it's a, it was a wasted opportunity, the next-gen squad, and Lambert really needs to take some responsibility for that, in my mind. Joe, um, Dan touched on Jordan Graham there. He's the big one, isn't he, that Villa have let loss from that next-gen side, and then the likes of Lewis Kinsella, who's not been given much game time. Yeah, I feel a bit for Lewis Kinsella. Uh, I, I saw glimpses of him uh, out on loan at, K- at Kiddy, and uh, I thought he, I thought he was, he was doing okay. I, I was surprised to hear that he hadn't been uh, offered a new deal. Uh, Jordan Graham as well. You're absolutely right. He's he had just kind of broken through at Wolves uh, and was really setting the league alight before he got that injury, which is going to have ruled him out now until the end of this this calendar year. So. He, he's taken like a duck to water two words of championship football and Dan's right he, he'd have been the perfect fit for Villa and then obviously nobody's going to miss Charles and Zobier are they Dan Matthews <laughs> no, I, can't, I can't see no I mean it, it, Rich, every time Richardson gets got announced in the lineup, it was meltdown and Zobier hasn't featured obviously he came on against Man City hasn't featured since but like like he said three years and Zobier's done nothing 60 grand a week just get rid of him. Thank God he's gone. Invest the money elsewhere. There's, there's just no excuses. Is there really on the field, off the field? His lack of contribution. His arguing with former players. You know, it's just it just hasn't worked for however long. It, you know, it's not just a recent thing. Is it? It's it's been going on for the last couple of years for Charles and Zogbia. Is there a wider issue in the academy, Dan Bodell? Not a lot has come through in, in the last few years, other than, other than Grealish. Really, I can't think of anyone who's come in and, and made a name for themselves in the first team. But as I said before, like Kinsella, we have had we have had some absolutely awful left backs over the last three or four years. I mean Luna was horrific. What he was ever doing near the first team, I don't know. The amount of goals he, he cost us that season were ridiculous and then he got bombed out after half a season. You never see him again like would we really lost anything by giving Kinsella a go at that point? I mean it's sink or swim for a young player. I and mean, he's been out at Kiddy and he, I think he's done okay. But you're not going to learn too much about him at somewhere like that. When you put these players in, in, in the first team playing with proper Premier League footballers, that's when, when you find out whether they can do it. I mean, I think when Grealish was on loan at Notts County, he did very well. And then he came in and he took that form in, into the first team. But we've just, I feel like we've wasted wasted some careers in, in some sense because Samir Carruthers was another one. He, he came on under McLeish a couple of times and I thought he looked good. And then you, and then you never see him again. So I feel there's been a lot of youngsters that have, have been hard done by at Villa, and I think that they'll definitely feel that as well. I mean, Kinsella alluded to it with his, a few of the things he said when he's left. He's, he's never been given a chance, and he must be looking at some of the people that have played ahead of him, and he'd he just be gutted. Oh, yeah, totally. I think that. And you look at some of the other ones as well, Ender Stevens as well, players like that, that were left backs as well, actually, ironically. But I think it's really harsh that some of the next gen players have never been able to give their chance in the first team. But I think that's just the situation we've had under Randy Lerner for some time now, is that. We've got these great youth facilities, and now that they've not been utilised. But on that note, Tony Z's potentially coming in, we hope, the fit and proper person's test. His main focus is to get youth players in, it seems to be Joe. Will that be a big plus to, to the fans, the fact that we're going to try and get youth players through? Yeah, uh, talking of Villas, Villas kids, I went to watch them at the Hawthorns uh, a couple of months ago. And in true Tony Pulis style, Albion won 1 0. and had nine men by the end of the game and a couple of red cards and uh, I thought Villa, to be honest with you, Villa played Albion off the park at the Hawthorns that day. Um, I was very, very impressed with a lot of the players there. Andre Green really stood out and it, you could kind of understand why he had a little bit of a of a go in the first team at the back end of the year. Um, so there are players there, They, you know, they, they're kind of waiting to be used, I think, waiting to, to be given the opportunity to impress. It's easier for the champion in the championship to be given that opportunity. Uh, as opposed to Premier League football when the stakes are so high. Um, so, yeah, I mean, the, the, there are players there even now at, at Villa beyond the, the next-gen uh, group of players. They're, they're, they're coming through now as well. Dan Bardell, do you, how many players would you realistically want to push into a first team, though, into the Championship, though? Like three or four, maybe a little bit more or maybe less? A lot, a lot depends on who, who else ready? comes in. I mean, we, we could be in a position where we don't sign many players if the, if the, if the takeover drags on. A lot, a lot longer. We may be in a position where we don't have a, a new squad of players, so they, they may have to be thrown in sooner than the new manager would like. 
But I just feel like that the back end of the season just gone. It was another wasted opportunity because there was no reason not to throw Andre Green in the team. We'd have lost nothing by playing him when we were already relegated. The, sh- the shackles would have, should have been off. He should have been able to go out there and express himself. We're already down. There's no pressure. But Eric Blatch seemed obsessed with picking on all the players that the, the fans didn't like. He, he seemed to go out of his way to, to upset everyone. He certainly upset me, as you, as you probably all know. Um, <laughs> Andre Green... He came on and showed brief glimpses of what he could do. As Joe said, he should have been in the first team because now he'd be he'd be ready to play in the championship and have had a bit more first team exposure. So someone like him would have been there ready at the start of the season. You can't chuck them all in, but I wouldn't surprise me to see three, four, five in that first match day squad come that game one. You know, you know the likes of Kevin Toner, uh, Asa Summer was another one that stood out for me. Jordan Lydon, that that game that I was referring to earlier was outstanding. Yeah, uh, you know, so they're there now, and they, and they have, um, you know, Eric Black <laughs> was, was was sticking with the likes of uh, Bakuna and, and Lescott and Richards, and it, it kind of baffled you at the end of the year, even as a uh, someone like myself that's not even a Villa fan. Jordan Lydon's the one for me. I really do hope he pushes forward. I don't know if you saw the other day, but he had an interview with the Villa press team, and he was so passionate about his attitude to want to develop and push as a player in the Championship and move forwards. I think that's the sort of song you need to see, and that's why, to me, we should have picked the youth players because they've got more hunger than any of that current squad. Yeah, I agree. Uh, whether you're able to kind of uh, manage to shift, say, ten players that probably need to be to be moved on in the championship with the kind of the little time that's going to be given in the summer, uh, with what with the Euros and then the, the pre-season and the start of the new campaign, uh, it, it's a it's a real real big task this summer for, for whoever's in there. Uh, I just can't see Villa, whoever the new manager is, shifting that kind of you know quantity of players that really need to be moved on. And Matthew, so how many players do you think we do need to realistically move on? How many can adapt and can recover from what was an awful season? Just gone. Well, you, you're already looking at the likes of Guzan, Lesko needs to go, Bakuna. As much as I personally like his attitude to an extent, Hutton probably needs to go. Is he good enough anymore? Probably not. I'd say six or seven, and will any of them recover who stay? I'm, not, I'm going to say no. I think you really need a, a big overhaul of that team. I think you, you definitely need, I know he's on the list to touch on as a new keeper, but you're going to have to throw in the likes of Hepburn Murphy, the likes of Green, uh, Lydon should be straight in that midfield with Gardner, in my opinion. But yeah, you're talking at least six or seven for me. It's, it's going to have to take a full refresh, because it's not easy to get over, not just relegation, but... And quite embarrassing relegation as well. It wasn't even close, and that's going to sit as you might sit on your mind as a player all over the summer, regardless of getting paid. You're going to constantly think that was pathetic. I've, I've, I've embarrassed myself. I've embarrassed my name. And that as a player, I imagine that's not easy to get over. There is a major overhaul that's needed. It's not going to be a few men that's gone. We hopeful for mass change under Tony Z. And on the note of Tony Z, there's a lot of fans that are quite worried. Well, I'll say the word worried. Uh, sort of wild understatement. A lot of fans are not very happy about the cloud over Tony Z, Dan Bodell. Should we be worried? I don't think we should be at all right now because I know, and I'm sure everyone else knows here, how long a fit and proper person's test takes. So I think the fans need to maybe understand a bit more that this is such a big thing to happen. I think the thing that probably makes it worse for fans is that obviously there was the big announcement, we've, we've been taken over, this is the new owner, it was all over the official site. And then you suddenly sit there back and you think, actually this hasn't been accepted yet there's a, a lot of tests and a lot of due diligence has got to, got to be done so I think that's probably part of the, the reason for it I mean in a way we should, we should be happy that it's taking time because it means the job has been done thoroughly and that is what's needed because the last thing we want is a, a disastrous owner in the, like, the model of Carson, the Carson Young that Blues obviously taken Blues down and, and nearly ruined them we don't, we don't want something like that to happen to us so it's good that it is taking time but I think just that initial announcement and the excitement is now being doused with, oh, actually, it hasn't actually gone through yet. It, it would set Villa back five, ten years, maybe, if, if it all went wrong. Um, but yeah, you're absolutely, Dan's absolutely right. You know, it, it, Ultimately, you can't really argue with the fact that it, it's taking its time, because it, you'd like to think the job's being done uh, to a good enough extent that it means that he's going to be a, a kind of ratified owner. And Dan Matthews, on that note, there's a lot of teams in that championship that have got dodgy owners, so to speak. The likes of Nottingham Forest with Alpawazi, the likes of Leeds with Chilino, the likes of Vincent Tannock, Cardiff City, and we really don't want to end up with that, do we? 
I, I couldn't think of anything worse. I mean, you've seen the likes of those clubs decline. I know Leeds, for example, are back in the Championship, but you've seen them go into League One. Admittedly, spent I think it was two or three years down in League One. Forest, they've brushed with relegation a couple of times. And for a club of our of our stature, we shouldn't really be looking at that. And we need, I think someone touched on a couple of weeks ago, solidity, a bit of balance is what we need now. And that's only going to stem from the right appointment as chairman. And if he does pass the test, then you'd like to think that, because it is obviously well ratified the test, that you've got the right man there. And I, I can only pray that <laughs> that's what happens and it's not a, a disastrous situation to what the Blues have been in. So, The one issue this season has been in goal. We've had Brad Goose and Mark Bunn between the sticks and neither of them have been that special, have they? Done by Dale. So... If you're looking at goalkeepers, where should we be looking? Or should we be looking at the likes of Jed Steer? Now he's back from Huddersfield on after a very successful loan spot. Should we be looking at getting him in the first team or getting a decent backup and then having Jed Steer in the number one? Uh, first off, Guzan ha- has to go because I think he's finished at the, the top level and he's he's definitely finished at Villa. I mean, he comes across like a, like a good guy. He's been a good servant to Villa, to be fair to him. But as a goalkeeper, once your confidence is gone, that's it. And then you can see now he's, he's frightened to play. And he also, the defence are very antsy when Guzan gets the ball. Is he going to do something stupid? And we've, he's made mistakes over the last two seasons, really. That He's cost us games on his own. And he doesn't really make those match-winning those match winning saves that he made in his first few seasons under Lambert anymore as well. So he's got to go. I think Jed Steer coming back could, could be a good thing for us because I speak quite a lot with uh, Radio Yorkshire. And the guy who I usually speak to, he's a Huddersfield fan. And he absolutely raves about Jed Stair. He said that he was unbelievable for Huddersfield this season. So if we've got a championship-ready goalkeeper there, already in contract with the club, then I think I think we should use him because there's a lot of money that needs to be spent elsewhere. So if Stair is ready, I suggest we play him. The one championship-level keeper that really, really impresses me is uh, Kieran Westwood. Now, with Sheffield Wednesday failing to go up this season, it might mean that you know a, a cheeky bid for him might not be... Uh, you know, a bad idea. Uh, I, I really, really rate him. Actually, I think he'd be uh, be the kind of goalkeeper you need. You need, I think, you need someone of that ilk. Uh, you know, a, a player that's ready to play 50 games a season. Uh, I'm not sure if Jed Steer uh, is is capable of doing that. David Button's been rumoured a few times, hasn't he, from Brentford? Would he be level the level of Kieran Westwood? I think so. Yeah, someone like that, Alex Smithies, or a, a player of that of that caliber. I think you need a a player that you know can can perform capably well in the championship and then you won't have any worries about them in the Premier League as well. Um, so yeah, uh, um, w- one thing is, is I think we can all agree on is that you don't really want to be seeing Brad Goose on there as number one next season. Is it harsh to label him worse than Peter Enkelman? Oh, my first thought would no because I can't think of any worse player than Goose. I, I, my, my opinion on that are well known. Um, I mean, Enkelman, yeah, he made his mistakes here and then, but Guzan has just been terrible match on match, year on year. Like Dan mentioned, it's been it's been three seasons now since he's had really a, a reliable back-to-back set of games. Um, other keepers to mention, I mean, obviously Alex Smith has touched on them. Personally, I'd, I'd probably look at, I mean, Rob, Rob Green's a free agent now, isn't he, after leaving mm. QPR? It may be as a backup to Jed Steer. I mean, if you're going to learn from someone, Rob Green's been promoted, I think it's two or three times now. Jesse, like you said, had a good championship season for his field. Maybe that that could work well. I, I don't know, but I'd, I'd certainly the first out of the door would be Guzan for me. I think he's one of the priorities, probably be just because I think someone from America would be ideal for him. I think someone would come in for him. I don't think we get much money for him, but just to get him off the, off the wage bill would probably be a boost. I mean, he's still USA's number one goalkeeper, so there's going to be some attention from American teams, I would imagine. As for first out out the door, you I mean really take your pick. I mean, you know, Guzan, Hutton, Lescott. That that'd certainly be my priorities if I if I was to get the job. They'd be the first ones out the door. That's all for now for the Villa View. Big thanks to Joe Chapman from the Birmingham Mail, Dan Matthews, and of course Dan Bardell. Remember to drop us a like below. Also comment as well. Also subscribe to us on YouTube. Remember that is free. And remember to put on those post notifications. And remember to follow us on Twitter, the Villa View underscore. That's the Villa View.